everybody, it's me, Brianna, and you're listening to Are We Caught Up Yet? Marvel Edition. Um, just some quick notes here. You can find us on youtube.com slash save the game media and podcast services. Um, if you want to uh, show Save the Game Media some extra love and get early access to all of our content, you can find us on patreon.com slash save the game media. All that fun stuff, tattoos, you know, all that fun stuff. <laughs> today I'm joined by my co host and friend Sam. How are you today? Greetings. <laughs> unwell unwell but you know i'm powering through do you know mm. do you know what i could use because i feel so unwell Bree? i could what? use a doctor oh my god a strange doctor the stranger the better oh, okay <laughs> all right well <laughs> um sounds good <laughs> I was I was expecting you to it. yeah no that's perfect uh, I was also expecting you to add that you're not busy since that's very unusual for you yeah you know well I think it sort of hurts my brain to think that I might not be busy but mm. currently as of the twenty fifth of September I am currently today not busy mm -hmm. you have just a couple which days is, of not busy which is exciting you know. It's it's unknown exactly how long I have. Uh huh. But it's until you it's, get the code for God of War three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and Ghost of Tsushima two at the same time. You know, I'm just. Oh my pure, god, that would be a nightmare. Um, how would you yeah. even tackle that? You're just like. <laughs> um, I mean, I've I've technically been on multiple projects at once before. Um, yeah, but of like that caliber and size. Um, kind of, because what was it? This is a bit of a tangent, but hey, oh, you know, this is this is mm -hmm. this is where we are. I'm trying to remember. I know it was um, Elden Ring. Uh, I I did Marvel Snap for ign okay and there was a third one concurrently at the same time i think it might have been give, give me two seconds actually what you talk about what you've been watching and how you're doing and i'll get back to you whilst i'm researching because this is the thing i have to answer now okay <laughs> so how are you and what have you been watching um i am doing well i'm a bit tired um i'm on like four hours of sleep right now but already have naps planned in the day so all good um and what have i been watching i finished uh this uh season eight of suits which means i'm caught up with everything that's on netflix currently i do believe there's nine seasons of suits total um so i have one last season to watch but i don't know where it is and i'm too lazy to look it up so that's where mm. we'll stop <laughs> on suits for now um so yeah i that's basically my my night last night so then i went to uh, no i didn't go to bed directly after that i read after that but that's neither here nor there um <clears throat> so yeah i think that's basically all i've been watching is suits i'm trying to think if there's anything else i've been watching some random anime here and there um yeah nothing cool Nothing too crazy. Brooklyn Nine Nine rewatch, you know. Yeah. All of the time well spent. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just think to myself. Oh, okay. What's the answer? I found the answer. So I I was. When when did Elden Ring come out last last year? Uh, it was like yeah. March of last year. Yeah, yeah. I think. So <clears throat> to start the year, I was on Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. And then I went straight into Elden Ring. Whilst I was doing Elden Ring, or well, towards the tail end of Elden Ring, I was um, that scratch that wrong, wrong, wrong. I started <laughs> the year with Elden Ring. Then, whilst I was technically still on the project for Elden Ring, I went into Tiny Tina's. That's what it is. So I was technically finishing up Elden Ring whilst I was doing the majority of Tiny Tina's stuff. And then as I was wrapping up Tiny Tina's stuff and still hadn't technically finished Elden Ring, I did the entirety of Marvel Snap. And then on top of that, 
as I was doing Marvel Snap, End of Tina's, the last scraps of Elden Ring, I then went on to do Lego Star Wars. Mm. So I was working on, and those, well, I mean, obviously Elden Ring is massive. Tiny Tina's isn't massive, massive, but big enough. And then Lego Star Wars is, is pretty big. But I mean, yes, not that it's at all related to this particular podcast, but anyway, it, it's it would be a difficult thing, but I don't think it would be impossible. Mm. I think it would just be what I would typically do is I would sort of flip flop back and forth between the two of them. And I would make sure I had prioritized and drafted the most important pages for each one as I was going mm. rather than trying to get one out of the way first fully so that at least some coverage was up for both, assuming they were launching around the same time, which if mm. in this hypothetical, if I had codes for both at the same time, then that would make sense release wise. So yeah, but hopefully that never happens because I mean it probably will. It's going to happen at some point, I'm sure. Not with I mean, God of War Two and yeah, I was going to say those Gears games will come out at the same time. But. but with other games of similar size or scope or mm. hype or whatever. So mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Have you been watching anything recently? No. Mm. No, I've been too busy this last week. I might end up actually catching up on some stuff in this little bit of downtime i have i might uh i said the other other week that i was lagging behind on ahsoka with my dad we might actually uh manage to power through that and catch up to where we currently are i think there's a couple of episodes left but we're like four episodes behind or something um so I'll probably do that outside of that uh Not a lot. I mean, uh, continuing along the, the Marvel line, obviously pertinent to today, um, in like a, just about two weeks, just just under, let's see, let's check the date. I don't know what the dates are. Um, yeah, like a week and a half, basically, uh, second season of Loki starts. So, oh, no, we're so behind. I'm so behind. That? you're going to catch up it's not like there's a new marvel thing every two weeks it might feel like that to somebody on the outside but it, that it's, it's not the case mm. so we'll easily catch up if even if we go relatively slow on these things so yeah for sure we'll yeah. we will eventually catch up yeah and it will happen sooner than you think i imagine and then once we catch up i'm going to be like are we caught up yet and then we will finally have a yes answer and then we'll have the little jingle that plays at the end of a sitcom and the credits yeah. will roll and that's the end. Mm -hmm. We won't we won't worry about any future Marvel stuff that comes out. Right. We just stop at that point and that's it. Yeah. 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 I have been thinking a lot about what I'm like wanting to catch up on once this is done. But I've got some quite some time to think about it. So I mean, I, I don't know what you haven't been caught up on, you know. So yeah, that's impossible for me to know. Yeah. Well, the the biggest debate is whether I can convince you to catch up on something, because then that changes what we I want. I mean, it depends very heavily on what it is. Because if it's like, well, I mean, hey, you know, never say never. I I I, I may well be inclined, you know. Yeah. I'm not going to be ignorant or be like, well. we only do the things, we only watch the stuff that I'm about and that I like. That's not yeah. what I'm about. It's just yeah. that that's what we're currently doing. But hey, you kind of like this stuff as well, sort of now anyway. So sort of. Yeah. So for this, for today. You're enjoying yourself. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> The intro to this episode has been rather strange. Uh, why? Because we talked about a hypothetical? No, just, I mean, we were off on a tangent and then we came back to hypotheticals. It's just, you know. Yeah. We took a scenic crazy. route to get to the topic what today. What was crazy is I reined myself in half the time too. I like yeah. filter like well over half the questions that pop up. <laughs> I also have another tangent that we have to get to. But I'm we'll talk scared. about that later. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> um, 
Okay. So today we're going to be discussing, as the title I'm sure says, Doctor Strange. Um, so we'll start with like just general thoughts, all that fun stuff. Mm. I have to say, first general thought, and I already messaged this to you, but I'm still in shock. <laughs> He's actually a doctor. <laughs> Who would have guessed? I, not me. <laughs> I mean, it's and in I know the title. Like, I know that's like silly, but like, how would I know that he was a doctor? <laughs> Because it's in the it's, it's in the name. I genuinely didn't know that he was a doctor. So when the movie started, I was actually shocked. I mean, technically, so that that, like, that is that is a, a, a logical thing because, like, Steve Rogers technically wasn't the captain, you know. And what about like Doctor Who? But like. I'm sure he's good with medicine. I don't know. They do call him a doctor, but I don't actually know if he's a doctor because I've never seen Doctor Who. But in he's, my head, he's never had that profession because he's he's an alien. But like, well, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, the whole fighting different alien species and traveling in a spaceship. The whole I actually time. I had to watch one episode for a college class once. True story. Well, it depends That's on like which only... episode you watched, which will shape your opinion, I imagine. <clears throat> yeah, it was Hopefully the one was where one. where it was like about like the angel people that when you look away, like oh yeah, 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 they yeah. exist. Don't blink, yeah. Yeah. That it's is a good fun. episode. Yeah, it was pretty good. I was like, dang, maybe yeah. I should have watched this in high school when everybody else was watching the it. The majority of Doctor Who is not like that. Hmm. So it's probably not not worth it. So David Tennant is the best doctor. I will stand by that to the, to this day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just got lost in a train of thought. <laughs> general thoughts. <laughs> oh, okay. I have to look something up while I'm talking about my general thoughts. Um, okay. So general thoughts. I loved this movie. I love magic so much. I was messaging you like, I cannot wait to talk about the magic system. We're going to do a whole like little thing where we just sit and talk about the magic system. I love it. Probably glad you watched this one on a, on a mm -hmm. larger screen, I imagine. In comparison to, to others. Okay, so so what, what Sam is referencing is, is I always watch on my iPad, even though I do have a 65-inch TV in my Disgusting. Room. Disgusting. <laughs> this isn't exclusive to, like, these Marvel films. This is, like, whenever I do anything, <laughs> I don't use my TV um, unless I'm, like, playing on my PlayStation. <laughs> um, so that's <laughs> that is what uh, that's what Sam's referring to. Um, am I glad that I watched it on my TV? Yes. Do I regret watching everything else on my iPad? No. Now hear me out. The reason I like watching on my iPad is because when I'm crocheting, I don't have to, like, it's, like, in my line of sight of, like, where I'm crocheting. Whereas, like, when I'm watching TV, it's, like... Yeah, so like when you're watching it on TV, you actually have to pay attention. Which you yeah, don't like. and I don't like that. Because what yeah. ends up happening is, is that I don't pay attention. I pay attention only to my crochet. <laughs> and then I don't know what happened. Which happened a couple times with this movie. And I had to go back. I'm like, wait, what happened? <laughs> have you ever considered just not crocheting? Um, yes, but then I somehow end up on social media. Oh. I'll be like, oh. I wonder what this person's doing. <laughs> and I'll be like, so I'm just going to check really quick. Evils, then. Yeah. Okay. Because then at least my ears are listening, even if my eyeballs stop watching. Because, of course, when you're on social media, your ears do, in fact, not listen. Yeah. <laughs> that is what happens. <laughs> I stop hearing. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. So I had to Google this. I had to Google whether this actor was the same actor that did um, Sherlock 
because I was like, wait, what if it's not the same actor? Yes, it is. So that's the tangent that my brain went on that I was like, I must know the answer to this question immediately because I love Sherlock. Very good. Anyways. <laughs> um, I'm barely awake in case anybody <laughs> couldn't tell. Um, yeah, loved this, love magic, love fantasy. This is the closest we get to fantasy, and I'm living for it, and I'm loving it. And honestly, it kind of makes me sad because, like, this is what, like, a high-budget, like, fantasy film looks like. And think mm. about how many cool things we could have if we had more high-budget fantasy stuff. Yeah, if only, if only, like, you know, there were more films with Doctor Strange in them, yeah only yeah but i feel like this is going to be the w one of if not the only isolated film from the rest of the avengers and the rest of the avengers are too sci-fi e for my taste so it's tainted now or you could view it on a more positive angle that you now <laughs> have something that you will definitively love whenever he shows up yeah no i'm excited about that part yeah. i'm not excited about them coming into his films if they yeah. do not not really okay that's good yeah. love to hear it glad, glad you liked it how do you feel about this film general thoughts um it's good it's it's undeniably good i think this is one of the the main culprits for me where with more time divorced from like first seeing it it's dropped in my like rankings overall a fair bit but that's just because to me not that that is a representative of this film's quality because it is very strong but just the um subsequent stuff that came out afterwards was either more interesting to me just on a subjective level or like an objectively better film in my opinion mm -hmm. um so it's not like this is worse necessarily it's just that i prefer say and this isn't necessarily indicative but i prefer infinity I've... war because it's got x and y and it does this particular thing mm. it's it's not like i'm saying this one's better than this one i'm just saying i like this one more because it has this thing in it that i really clicked with um so this is probably going to be quite low especially as we get further into the ranking stuff further down the line but that doesn't mean that i don't think this film is great because it is mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's the thing with list like like for example the top 10 anime of all time like number 10 doesn't mean it's a terrible anime it's still no. one of the best anime of all time right yeah i mean the when you're sharing that kind of company it's like it's interchangeable at that point, basically. Yeah. I do want to be clear, though. The bottom of this list is terrible. Particularly the Hulk. <laughs> what? There's, there's like, salvageable stuff, but not a lot, you know? There's, there's like, w when you get down to the bottom, it's like you're scraping the dregs out of the barrel. There's the little nuggets are good, but it's like, mm -hmm. does it really, is it really worth it? Not, not really. Hmm yeah um but yeah, if i never see that the... film again i'll be very happy <laughs> oh so so me too um <laughs> if but yeah this is definitely at least for now on the on the upper echelon i mean for 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 reference not that this means anything to our conversation but this this remains my mum's favorite film in the mcu oh um because she's she's the person that i go see all these films with um, and watch the shows with and stuff. And this this is her favorite, definitively. Not only because she loves Benedict Cumberbatch as an actor, but um, she just finds it the most distinct visually and thematically. Yes. You know, it so, is very distinct, like the yeah. way that they do the CGI and such. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. And you've got to think, like, I, I've said throughout this whole thing, one of my favorite p 
parts of being invested in this universe is that when someone new is introduced and I see them in a project, whether it's a film or more recently now we've got TV shows, once they're introduced, it's like just by the nature of the beast, I know that there's going to be subsequent appearances and interactions with other characters. And because it's a superhero IP, the the power base that that character has is something that is going to be played with and experimented with and extrapolated on in future projects yeah so like if i trace back to my head when this came out in 2016 obviously there is no character like steven in the mcu at this point where mm-hmm. we are so like the the breath of fresh air that this film was not that, that it was getting stale because we were still loving it at the time um, I really like, think this was a huge breath of fresh air, especially for me. It was like almost relief. <laughs> damn. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> hey, I mean, you can't help it. You know, you've got to be honest. Um, but yeah, like regardless, the point still stands that it was very um, refreshing, whether you were tired of the the other films that we've gotten recently um, or just overall or not. It was like, this is something new this is exciting this this the 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 ideas and the things and the people and the places um debuting in this film are now just entities that exist in this universe Mm -hmm. and the the possibilities are particularly with this character more endless than any other that we've seen thus far so yeah exciting it is very very exciting um yeah, yeah. I, I I have to say, like, I really, I think that the, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this, because Doctor Strange kind of deals with, like, different universes, it does still kind of, like, have that sci-fi twist, but I do still very much enjoy Dimensions. Magic. Dimensions. Yeah. There's a difference. Okay. <laughs> Trust me, there's a difference. But I, I get your point. I'm being facetious. Like I know. I know what you mean. Nice. But just I'm saving from any potential comments that there could be. Like, ah, oh, she you're she said me. she said universes, and it's like, well, no. It's like just just clear it up now. Save yourself the grief. Because we all know that, you know. Everybody at Save the Game Media just is with waiting with bated breath to see what the people in the dregs of the comments are saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Amon was messaging me because he, like, was trying to get to the settings to download, like, a podcast recording. And he's like, sorry, let me know when you're done. And I was like, you could, as long as you don't click, like, join your, with your camera, nobody can see you. So, yeah, <laughs> that's what I was doing. Okay. Um, I was listening, though. I just... I was explaining why I was on my phone. Yes. Yeah. Anyways. Um, okay. What should we talk about? Okay. I will say. I, I did like the way that like we just kind of followed my brain last time. Because I think that it was mostly productive. Although slightly tangential most of the time. So we'll try it again. Because I don't think. That's fine. You know, we, we don't need to week. be. We don't need to be checklisty. We can just be. I try to be thoughts. as structured. Yeah, I try to be as structured as possible, but I also think that it's nice to kind of follow the flow of the conversation. Particularly um, as these films start to diversify, I think it's th- there's more justification for going a bit off the rails. Yeah. So I I do think most of this film is a bit off the rails. So. Yeah. Um. Starting with him driving off the rail. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> I will say just because I see it on my like little list of like things to talk about soundtrack, I did notice the soundtrack enough to be like, oh, this isn't too bad. Mm-hmm. But I will say, I know this isn't the same as soundtrack. Sound design for this film, <laughs> it was so good. It was so, so good. There was a particular part I wish I could remember. It was exactly when I messaged you, but I was like, oh my gosh, the sound design. Oh, it was when she shoved him out of his body the first time. The sound that, that like it makes. Oh, mm. 
I love sound design so much. Um, yeah. If for anybody that does watch anime, there's an anime called Fire Force. Um, and there is, I think it's episode 13 of season one. There's a particular sound effect that Benny makes, like when he does this explosion thing. And if you know what I mean, you know what I mean? I'll send it to you. That is the most niche reference (laughs) I've ever heard. I know, but it's the sound design is so crazy. And that's, it kind of reminded me of that. It's not as satisfying as that sound, but like when you, I'll send you this, the sound, or I guess like the little clip from the anime. And when you hear it, you'll understand like why, like it's because it's, it's so, it's so ingrained in my brain that I like, I've seen this clip so many times because I'm like, I love the sound so much. Anyways, that's what it reminded me of, um, which is very high praise. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's all I'll say about sound slash music, but I did want to mention it because I, I was impressed. Did you want to say anything about the the music? Um, well, I'm glad you did notice it. Um, Michael Gitch. Michael Giacchino is the composer. Um, We will be seeing a lot more of him um, in in various faculties going forward. Um, I think he is one of the better composers that they've got. And like we were saying about how this film feels very distinct and unique in comparison, I think that on first watch, it might not be super prevalent. Obviously, you noticed it more so than others. But the 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 sound that this film has in terms of music not sound design but music is very unique it's it's like harpsichord electric sitar kind of stuff um which plays into the kind of mysticism thing that's going on um like very stereotypical sounds that they use in terms of like the instruments that they're deriving stuff from but because it is so different to every other, I don't want to say generic, but like more stereotypical hero-y, theme-y stuff that we've gotten mm-hmm. thus far. Um, I think that that earns uh, Giacchino a, a fair few brownie points in that department. Um, yeah, I mean, at, at this point, I can't speak for future, but at this point, I don't think it's too difficult to stand out with music. <laughs> No, no, because I mean, so, you've got like Guardians and then this, I would say. Yeah, like, Guardians is top, obviously, because it's such a just dis- it's like a character in and of itself within the film. Mm-hmm. But then below that, I would probably say it's this, yeah, uh, outside of maybe like the Avengers theme, which we're seeing more and more of. But yeah, yeah, that's really good. It's really good. I, I do enjoy, um, I did enjoy, I should say, this music. I was like, I, I think that the more that this goes on now, because this is like the 14th film that we've watched. It is. Um, I will say I'm starting to get a little disappointed that like the music hasn't picked up quite yet. Like I will say, like I said, I do like this film, but I would say it's like good rather than like, wow, this is amazing. Great. 10 out of 10. You know, I would say this is probably like a six or seven out of 10 soundtrack. And the the longer this goes on, the more I realize like how much I identify with the soundtrack of things. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, like Avatar: The Last Airbender, they put so much like heart and soul into that. They like literally made up an instrument, and in, yeah, in the show, like stuff like that, or Lord of the Rings. Like I know Lord of the Rings is like a huge like it's a, it's a different thing because that soundtrack is a beast, but it's just it's I'm missing it. I would like. I would like more, please. I think as well, like uh, uh, an interesting thing, not that it detracts from your point at all, but it's like we're still kind of, we're we're getting towards the end of this era, but we're still towards the tail end where more often than not going from one project to the next, it is actually like a different character each time that is being introduced for the first time. Mm -hmm. So we haven't had that many opportunities if we reflect back on the grand scheme of things where musical motifs or themes could really become like super ingrained Mm -hmm. um like again iron man never really had anything there is a thing there is a a theme for captain america but it, it never really took center stage um you know thor hasn't had anything really 
um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So outside of like, again, the Avengers theme and some of the soundtrack for Guardians, but that doesn't really count because it's licensed music. I mean, there is technically original music in the Guardians, which I think is good, but it relies mostly on the licensed stuff. I think that is maybe part of the, the not saying that's an issue, but part of the thing that we're experiencing at this point in the watch where as we get into more more and more if as we get more and more sequels of these established characters you'll notice the motifs more not that that will necessarily mean that you think that they are then good but because we're not really resting with one character for any prolonged length of time in a consecutive fashion that might be why some of the musical stuff isn't quite sticking yet it, yeah, I mean, it definitely it might be. I will say that the composer for this is actually a very prolific composer. He is. <clears throat> is this his first Marvel film? Because I see uh, that he's, as far as I he's know. participated in further Marvel films since. Yes. Yeah. But it doesn't look like many. Yeah, so... Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is the guy who composed the soundtrack to Up, which is arguably, yeah, he is. Um, mm -hmm. Up and Ratatouille, which are two of the best soundtracks ever, if I do say so myself. The Incredibles. Mm hmm. That's another one. Yep. And yeah. Cars 2, don't forget. Whoa. Back up. I don't like the Cars films. Ugh. <laughs> oh. The first one's good. He also I did Coco, it. which is amazing. Yeah. 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 So it makes sense why this soundtrack stands out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty good composer. Anyways. Um, okay. I am going to say really quick, I don't think this passes the Bechdel test. Again. <laughs> no. Yeah. I think there's two named female characters. One of them doesn't actually have a name. And they definitely don't talk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Who, who cares about this whole Bechtel test? Stuff, you know, right? Christine and the ancient one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and they technically gender bent the, the ancient one, so there might have even just been one female character in this film. That's fair. Yeah. Um, okay. Quality of your presentation. Yeah. Um, who needs women? Yeah, right. What are they good for? <laughs> Sandwiches. <laughs> That's an Not me though. I I hate sandwiches, so you won't catch me making one. <laughs> sandwiches are gross. Um, I will eat sandwiches occasionally, but I still don't make them unless it's on pita bread. <laughs> anyway, um, so okay, so let's see. Where do I want to start here? Um, I think I want to start with like his like the whole origin story that they showed. I, one, will say, one one good thing, one bad thing, bad thing first. I am tired of, like, the, this person is selfish, <laughs> this person's a terrible person, and then they become a hero. <laughs> I mean, but that's, that's oh the my God. journey, isn't it? <laughs> not necessarily. They don't have to be a terrible person. That's not, that's not, not all of them are. the hero's journey. No, you're are. you're you're not wrong. Not all of them are. However, when we start looking at like what's the origin? <laughs> like Ant-Man has something similar, Thor has something similar, Iron Man has something similar. <laughs> Captain America doesn't. No, Captain America doesn't. Proud of him. Yeah. 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 A technical. Uh, it's just 
Stephen is a neurosurgeon. Like he is actively helping people. He's just narcissistic. Right. So no, I just I just mean like the that I think that that's like my least favorite part about his origin story is that sure. we just have another dude that's just like I'm a man. I do what I want. <laughs> like, like the whole cocky attitude, like all of that stuff. He, he he's Tony. Totally a little tired of it. A little tired of it. Yeah. He is. He is a cocky playboy who's rich oh, and then experiences an accident and has part of his body ruined and therefore learns through a wise old man slash woman in this case how to be a, a better person and to help people that's just tony stark in the cave yeah so mm -hmm. which is just I, copying I definitely... it's just copying it's copy and paste these films are awful yeah, you're not wrong. Let's just end the recording here. <laughs> We're done. This is the end of the series. <laughs> no, um, I will say that that was like my least favorite part. I did just want to get that out of the way because like that drove me crazy. But um, the rest of it, I, I did enjoy. I enjoyed that like he has like a very unique like he has had this whole life because like becoming a doctor is no like it's no small feat right mm -hmm. and like becoming a doctor that is so well known for like his surgeries and not just any surgeries but brain surgeries is like yeah. it's a really impressive feat i think so you know mm -hmm. um and so I, I do think that that's interesting that he has like <clears throat> and i know a lot of these heroes do have like the, the their whole life before obviously they become a hero but i think that this one stands out in particular because he does, like you said, he does a lot of good, even if it's like for his own ego, for his own like gain, um, playing with death or whatever, she, like whatever she says. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I do still think that he's like doing good in the world regardless. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's like really interesting. Um, and I enjoyed that. I did also enjoy his whole, like the whole like I didn't enjoy the crash that obviously is spooky but like that whole like him trying to fix it him going through like I think she said seven surgeries like him going through all this stuff and then finally like he turns to like and you hear this I feel like you hear this a lot where people are like I tried everything in western medicine like I'm turning to eastern medicine whatever like this seems to be like a common like not super common theme but it's a common enough theme that happens in our world and then of course you think of like the oh well this is just all gift shop stuff even though all of it's based on like ancient medicine <laughs> yeah and, i mean it's, it's just know. about how if if conventional methods fail you people who actively want to overcome something will turn to more spiritual things you mm. know whether it's herbal home remedies whether it's meditation or yoga or you know and not saying that those are like spiritual things in you know adver inadvertently but but they're more holistic than just like yeah, exactly yes that's what i'm going for yeah yeah maybe he should have tried essential oils maybe have you tried essential oils steven <laughs> have you done a downward dog recently that might, might be might solved all his issues yeah. Could he do downward dog with his hands though? I think so. I mean that that doesn't doesn't require too much in terms of because your hands are like planted on the floor, aren't they? So yeah, like... but his hands seem to also not be able to like fully straighten out that well. So I would wonder if that's like flattening it like that would hurt. Maybe. Maybe. But then it depends on how how determined he is, you know. If he really yeah. wanted to, could he make it happen? Hmm. Who knows? maybe maybe um so i think I'm trying to think of what else i i do i think that i could have had like a little bit more of like the waiting period where he was like a jerk and then they just let him in like five hours later like i think i could have stood to wait a little bit longer there like a little bit further explanation further details like oh like why are we going to let him in? That kind of stuff. But 
that's not like a he. It's just more of a nitpick than anything. Like I think I, I could have used a little bit more there. Okay. Um, but yeah, I I think he's a really interesting origin story. I kind of wish we knew because at this point, obviously, the ancient one is like gone as far as we know. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think I would have liked to understand a little bit more, right? Because Stephen obviously comes to the realization that like you do have to learn how to harness this power in order to make sure that like the earth is saved. So it's like, you have to, it's kind of like a deal with the devil kind of thing. Right. But like, I yeah. wonder how the ancient one came to that realization as well. Who knows? Not me. Who knows? That's for sure. I mean, but, neither do I. But it would be interesting to learn all of that stuff, like all of the like origin stuff. Um, but she obviously knew about she knew about Stephen before he even arrived, right? And knew so about her like, death as well. Yeah. So there, there's clearly like grander things at work and and knowledge that she has access to, which obviously we learn throughout the film. Do you think that that's part of? It, but... Do you think that's part of why she said no, like when he first showed up? Like obviously he was being a jerk, and I think that that's a huge part of it. But do you think like she realized that her destiny was kind of coming for her? That's an interesting read. I never read it that way. Um, I would say no. But I mean, we've never really had. There is no clarification either which way. So that is a completely valid read on it. Um, I quite like that actually. I I've always read it as just that if he showed up and sort of um, you know dismissed it, and then they showed him what they showed him, and he was like, "Teach me," um, and she just said yes. Like that isn't a lesson. For Stephen, right. you know, right? Like he sort of again goes back to your point. It might nest might have been better if we had had a little bit more of that intermedial period um, where he was rejected and they were sort of going over it. But I think that it was more like we're going to make you feel as if you've lost out on the best opportunity, so that you come to appreciate the wealth and the value of what we are going to provide and that yeah. you aren't the one dictating how this is going to go you know um, which is how he's had it his entire life he's always been the you know ask and i shall receive kind of thing mm -hmm. so i think that's how i read it but i actually almost like your read on it more mm. i mean i think that both things can be true at the same time right of course, yeah absolutely because she could have had like just like a moment where she's like, hey, if I turn him away, maybe I won't die. Hmm. And then after the conversation, you know, with the other dude is like, okay, maybe I can't yeah. stop this from happening. Good job. Thank you. I'm smart sometimes. It's rare, but we had a moment where I was smart there for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, what else do we want to talk about? Um, okay, I think that this is a great time to get into the magic system because I love it. Um, the first time that we see the magic system where I believe they're in the mirror dimension and it's the ancient one fighting like all of the bad guys. Um, God, like that CGI pops off so hard, like where the mm. building is literally like they're like rolling in and it's so cool. It's so, so cool. Um, really enjoyed that. Like, I mean, they have like similar themed CGI, but that part in particular, I think I really enjoyed. Um, yeah. But yeah, in terms of the magic system, I have so many questions and I don't think that there's answers, but like, is there a limit to like the power? Like, so often with magic systems, there's a limitation on power, like in terms of like mana capacity, essentially. Um, whether mm -hmm. it's called mana or not. But it doesn't seem to be that there's like any sort of mana capacity here. It just seems to be knowledge-based where it's like if yeah. you can do this magic circle faster than the other person or if you have knowledge of more magic circles, then you're the winner, basically. 
which would put Doctor yeah. Strange at a huge advantage, right? Since he has like that crazy memory. Yeah, if if you if you, I mean, technically we haven't had like specific answers, but just from like right. deduction and stuff, it's like the more spells you learn from those tomes at Camartage, the more spells you have access to, and the only reason that some sorcerers don't know those spells is because they have arbitrarily segmented certain knowledge away because it's too powerful you know but if anybody that was training at Kamataj and was competent with magic read those books they could learn the spells yeah which i i prefer obviously that kind of like you said blows the doors open in terms of one what's possible and two the things that they can get away with yes I don't know. There's something about that that I like. Where like, not that this is how it works in the films. I'm not giving anything away, but like the the logic, the head canon, where like each successive Doctor Strange appearance, he could have read more of those books and therefore has more stuff at his disposal. Like that's exciting. And like, mm -hmm. what could that be? Um, and you know, I think it's a fair assumption to assume that as we see more of him, his spells will become more elaborate and diverse um, because they do. Um, but yeah, like I, I think they, they've made it the way that it is to make it as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I get the mana thing and I think in a, in, a, in a alternate universe, it could have made sense, but I think that they're just like, if you know how to do magic, you could feasibly do any magic that is yeah. I mean, that exists. Knowledge based magic systems are not uncommon. Um, yeah. So it, it it definitely makes sense, especially with like I think that a knowledge based magic system complements the character much more than a mana based system because he is coming into magic so late in life that frequently when you're coming into magic late in life, you will not be able to really expand your capacity for mana, and yeah. if you are, it's not by much typically. Um, so I think that this magic base, like the way that they're basing it is, it makes way more sense for his character. I do also want to say that I really enjoyed like the way that they resolve because basically he's like a new student, right? So it doesn't make sense for him to be able to take on like the bad guy, like for this like world, right? Like it doesn't make sense. Yeah. But the way that they make up for that is basically his like his cloak, essentially, um, like kind of makes up for his lack of knowledge mm -hmm. and i think that that was really well done and i'm very interested to know more about his cloak yeah um also best character in the mcu so cute. yeah that's what i <laughs> that's where i'm at right now. that was a joke it's <laughs> it's not obviously but... no it is he certainly <laughs> is a character um, but yeah, I do think that like, okay, so one of the, one of the biggest things with magic systems is like, so, um, I don't know if you've heard of these before, but, um, Brandon Sanderson's laws of magic. Um, and one of the laws of magic is that like you, um, the amount that you explain about a magic system directly correlates to how much, uh, conflict and issues you can resolve essentially with the magic system. And I think that this film has balanced that very well, where you understand enough about the magic system to kind of um, explain how they resolve the problems that they do resolve with the magic system. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very well balanced. And I because you, I, I mean, in my opinion, you always want to keep some air of mysticism and the unknown to right. it. <clears throat> right but i mean i do think that there's a you're you're not wrong but there is a beauty in like magic systems that are almost like science based yeah where it's like you you understand almost everything about the magic system there's very little little left to the imagination but i would say on that scale of like the magic system i would say it's leaning more towards like you don't really understand what's going on um i'm trying to think of the scale that that um brandon sanderson uses i know one end is lord of the rings because you basically understand nothing about that magic system hmm. and so um, they don't use a lot of the magic system to resolve the issues which is yeah. why 
that magic system works. But then, like, not that it's necessarily intrinsically linked, but the, mm -hmm. the stuff that I do like is that, like, in the first Thor, Thor is explaining, like, the other realms and everything to Jane. And he says that, you know, where he comes from, science and magic are one and the same. So I think that they don't necessarily in the MCU, just in general, not just in Thor or in this, I don't think they necessarily do a great job of contextualizing that too much. But I still think that there is a degree of um, correlation between the science of the world and the magic of this world. Mm -hmm. That they aren't necessarily one and the same, but that they are, it's almost like you're looking at the same thing, but just from a different perspective. And because of the perspective, they appear differently mm -hmm. you know yeah um, they they coexist very well yeah um, and something something sorry a, a tidbit that just popped into my head and i'm surprised i remembered it because if i don't say it i'll be annoyed um i would have told you at some point <laughs> anyway but this isn't ever explained in the films so it's not like a spoiler but it is worth knowing i mean it, it helps as early as possible um so who is and this isn't a trick question. Who's another magic user that we currently know that's in the MCU thus far? Um, I would say probably like Thor slash Loki. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, another example, th those are correct examples. Another example is um, Wanda. Okay, yep. Because she's got the red stuff, you know. Yeah, and it does visually look fairly similar. That's because it is. Mm. The magic that like Loki or Wanda uses is the exact same magic that Doctor Strange and his cohort tap into. It's just that Loki and Wanda aren't trained in accurately accurately harnessing it. So if they so were they're essentially using raw magic. Okay. Yeah, if but if they were Loki and Wanda would be conjuring these symbols and stuff. It's just that they're more chaotic in their spell casting because they haven't been formally trained. Um, but they are competent with magic enough where they can summon it. It's just it appears oh. differently, but it is all the same system. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Nice little tidbit to know. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that, that makes sense. Um you can have more than one magic system. In yeah. the universe, but I think since there's Again, already like a whole scientific system, it makes sense to have everything be one. And just for simplicity's sake, they're like, yeah, they're all magic users. It's the same magic. It's just Doctor Strange has done the used. learning. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So here, here's the here's the direct laws, just so we have them. So the first law of magic is an author's ability to solve conflict with magic is directly proportional to how well the, under, the reader understands said magic. And I think that they do that very well. I think that they balanced mm. it very well. Yeah. It's a good one. Um, the second law is limitations um, must be greater than power. So whatever the limitations are to the magic must be greater than the power of the magic. And I think that they did that well. Is fairly. Well. I mean... Uh, Mordo goes on about you know upsetting the natural balance and stuff. Mm. Not that we actually really see that in this film, right? But like the the not the understanding that, assumedly, if you go a bit too hard, things will go quite wrong. Um, they they lay they lay the groundwork at least for that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then the third one, I think, the third, because there's three laws of magic, but the third one, I think, is basically what you were saying is expand what you already have before you add something new, which is like mm. expanding the current magic system rather than adding a new magic system, which yeah. they do, mm -hmm. from what you just said. So, yep. yeah, I won't say much more about the magic system, but I do think that they did it very successfully. And I, um, um, it was a little bit on the nose to basically be like, hey, look, there's this eye that can... <laughs> That can fix things and you know change time. Wonder if, if we'll use that. <laughs> but um, I'm glad that they did explain it early on in the film, and it's not just like, "Hey, here's this magical eye that'll fix everything." You know, it's not a MacGuffin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
that that was one of the worst parts about uh whatever magical beasts or, or fantastic beasts and where to find them they just like randomly started using spells that don't appear in any other harry potter thing because it's but, convenient yeah 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 they broke the laws of magic there but um yeah um okay let's see i think that's everything i wanted to say about the magic system um i feel like there was one other thing that i wanted to talk about let me consult my list cloaks sure. cloaks yes we need to have a conversation you said that i don't have to lecture you about it which is great sounds like you're on my side why are cloaks not in fashion <laughs> Uh. Isn't that very ups? I find it very upsetting. I've already talked about this on I Hate My Friends, Rest in Peace, several times actually, because I'm very passionate about this. <laughs> I want clothes yeah. to be back in fashion, not capes. I don't like capes. Cloaks, yes. Yeah, I think I think there's a space for them. There is, and you actually you can buy some really, especially on Etsy. You can find some really awesome cloaks, but I believe if that. you wear if you wear them around, I suspect people may look at you weird. Yeah. Although maybe if you had like like a one of those like kind of like half cloaks where it's like almost kind of a jacket, almost kind of a cloak, I think you can kind of get away with that, especially if you're like walking around like an aesthetic city that kind mm. of like fits the vibe. I think you could get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. But like a full cloak, I don't think you could get away with that. Not yet, anyway. How do we make Maybe this change in the world? I, I don't know that we can. Here's the plan. We become very rich and famous. <laughs> mm. And then we just start convincing people that cloaks are cool. I'm not sure that's how it works, to be honest. <laughs> Are you telling me if Billie Eilish just started wearing cloaks all the time, people wouldn't start wearing them? Like, to a degree, yes. But I don't know that that would instrument the global kind of change that we're looking to implement, you know? Right, which is why we need to, both of us, separately become rich and famous. Because then we're attacking from two, <laughs> two ends. So, so what you're saying is if there were two Billie Eilishes, she would just dominate the world yes yeah i stand by that well, i mean there's no way to disprove that so yeah schrodinger's cat you, you're right and wrong at the same time yeah except for i'm always right so apart from when you're not uh... so yeah that was one of the things i wanted to talk about in actuality i did write down cloaks because i also wanted to discuss his cloak because i feel like are we, are we going to get more information about this cloak? Or is it just like it is? No, it's just a thing. Okay, so based on what his whatever mentor dude said, um, this is an artifact, mm. meaning that it was created by another magic user at some point in history. Because it was an object that was imbued with power because you cannot harness the power yourself is that assumedly yes okay and his is that little staff whip thing yes well okay. well no because his is technically the uh the little 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 floaty boots that he's got that lets him do the hop skippy jumpy oh I didn't realize that was okay. I, I like those um, little but he, he, things he does. But the, the that that whip staff truncheon baton the thing that was also another artifact. Yes. So you're allowed to have more than one artifact. It's just that the artifact has to choose you. Well, no, because that that baton wasn't his artifact. I think he was just wielding it in demonstration. But then he keeps fighting with it throughout the rest of the film. Does he? Yeah. I can't say I've ever noticed that. <laughs> yeah, he for sure does because Doctor Strange uses like like the tendrils of magic where he's like whipping things and like 
holding things and tying things like threads. But he uses that baton. Interesting. Which is why I assumed it was his artifact. Rather maybe than maybe maybe, maybe Mordo has two then. Maybe maybe they do huh. have two. <laughs> I, I don't know that. Like I think you're you're right when you said it a minute ago, but I didn't pay attention. Um, that there wasn't a, an explicit rule that you could only have one artifact. I so, mean, he made it the way that he said it made it seem like you could only have one artifact. Like I think that that is like, but. Mordo, like, not that Mordo is the only exception to the rule, but I think that there are exceptions to the rule. Yeah. So, so is the the eye thing, is that an artifact as well? Or is that, like, an No. That's not an artifact, right? Okay, I didn't think so. No, because the, the eye itself doesn't hold any power whatsoever. It's, it's just, just a vessel to contain, contain the stone. Okay. And the vessel itself was made by the original ancient one, whoever that was. Agamato. Yeah. How do you remember those names? <laughs> well, because the eye is called the eye of Bagamato. I'm going to forget that. <laughs> You'll be reminded quite often going forward. Okay. So I see. I see. Maybe okay. one day it will stick. Maybe. Strong babies. <laughs> um, yeah. But you so... couldn't remember Mordo, so that, that's, that's a worrying sign, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm obviously paying attention enough. <laughs> you, of course. Yeah, I mean, you names. notice that, that Mordo has the, the baton for the rest of the film, and I haven't. I've seen this film many times. So Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe you are wrong, you know, but you've got me second-guessing myself, which is impressive. <laughs> so, I mean, I also beat you on Marvel trivia. I mean, you didn't really. Because you knew the answers because you looked up the questions. If you but were I'm to the... answer those questions cold, you would have lost. You're right. But that wasn't so, what that wasn't the activity that was so happening. That's not, that's not beating me at it, is it? It is, because if I'm the person giving the questions, the way that I win is by you not being able to guess. But you're not playing because you're the one <laughs> providing the questions. Oh my you gosh. You weren't a competitor in that in that situation. I was a competitor. I mean, you weren't because there wasn't any skin in the game for you. You weren't. There never has been. <laughs> there never has been. <laughs> but. <sighs> oh, well. <laughs> um, okay. I think that's everything. I did want to say I really do love his cloak. It's so cute. It was like wiping the tears. and It was like the. I could not stop laughing when I know it was like a pretty serious moment, but when it was like strangling that person and it just like didn't stop. It just kept bashing his head against the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it just like kept going like for way longer than it probably should have. That's yeah. what got me. I was like, damn, dude, <laughs> that cloak really has a lot to say. And trying to, trying to pull Steven towards something when he's trying to get something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Steven. <laughs> I've been wanting to say that the whole time. Is that some sort of reference? Glad that that I got that. Yeah, no, so it's it the joke is is like, oh, what's your name? He's like, oh yeah, Steven with a PH. And then they wrote Steven. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Because his name is Steven with a PH. It is. So <laughs> Been wanting to say that for the past hour or so. I'm glad I got that out of my system. Um, <laughs> can we have heard that one before, but glad to introduce you to it, I guess. Um, okay, let's see what else. Um, I would really be more interested because there were a lot of artifacts there. I really would have been interested to learn more about the artifacts. I just I kind of just want this to be a book, like not a comic, just an actual book. Because when you have books, you can get like, then it, when he went into that room, then you would have gotten the description where the guy's like, oh, and then this artifact is this, and this artifact is this. And the cloak would have just been one of the artifacts mentioned versus like the artifact, right? And then you get all mm -hmm. the details about all of these artifacts, and then you get all this cool information. I would have enjoyed it. Yeah would have enjoyed it i will say do you know 
about to say something pretty off wall. Off the wall. I'm so sorry. Have you heard of the ladybug in cat noir? I I got none of that. <laughs> ladybug and cat lady- noir. Ladybug and cat noir. Miraculous ladybug. And cat noir. Nope. So it's a kids show. It's a French kids show, actually. Um, and the magic system <laughs> from that kids show kind of reminds me of Doctor Strange. So that's why I brought it up. Because I was hoping you would know it. <laughs> but Are you sure they did? What, when did this show come out? That's a good question. Let's see. Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. Okay, I really do love this show so much, in case anybody was wondering. Um, the first episode aired October 19th of 2015. Mm. But it technically debuted in South Korea on September 1st. Does that answer your question? Yeah. No, I was just if if it because if it if it came out after Doctor Strange, it might have just copied Doctor Strange. I mean, I think similar. technically I mean, I it does come it after like Doctor that. Strange because comics would precede both. But sure, but the the magic system in in this film doesn't really mimic that of the comics. Oh, well then, yeah, Doctor Strange copied Miraculous. Tales I'm of not Lady sure Buckingham. how <laughs> accurate that is. <sighs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> No, I was just curious if you'd seen that and if you agreed with me, but you haven't seen it, so you can't agree with me, and no. that's okay. Um, okay, what else did I? I think that's everything that my. Oh, I wanted an update on the stones, so we do have mm. to discuss like the through line. So we know one of the stones is in vision. We know one of the stones is in the eye. Yep. Is that all we have right now? Or am I missing nope. a third one? You're missing a couple. Okay, third one would be... the, the No, because the collector doesn't still have that, right? You Wh- which one? Which one are you talking There's about? There's like that, that collector that you see in Guardians. Mm-hmm. I can't remember if he still has the stone or not. Which one, though? Oh, good question. Good point. I don't know. Let's let's hear it from the professional here. Where are the stones right now that we know about? So one is in the Eye of Agamato. Mm-hmm. One is assumedly in vision. Mm-hmm. One is with the collector. So that, so the, that, let's do colors. Green is with Doctor Strange. Okay. Yellow is in vision. Okay. Red is with the collector. Okay. From Thorsu. Okay. The, the red gooey stuff that that was a stone. Okay. Yep. So he's got he's got that one because the Thor's friends gave it to him at the end of that film. Purple one, which was from Guardians. Mm-hmm. That's with the uh, the Nova Core on that planet. They put it in the in their safe thing. With oh them. yeah, okay, yeah, I remember that. Okay, yep. And then we have the Tesseract. Oh, okay. So we know where all of them are now. No. Is there more than five? There's six. Oh damn! I thought there was five. No. There's there's one for each knuckle, and then one slap bang in the middle. Of the the back of the palm. Mm. Well, I mean, why did I mean, you say what? the back of the palm? <laughs> well, it's back like, of the hand. Uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> sure. Okay. Sure. Where the palm is, but not. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, okay. So we're missing one, which I assume yeah. we'll find shortly in like the next couple of films. Who knows? Because next is Guardians 2 and then Spider-Man. And I don't Mm -hmm. think it's going to be in either of those. It might be in Guardians 2, but I don't think so. Who knows? You. Um, Yeah, I do. (laughs) 
And then for another through line moment, we see Stan Lee. Indeed. And I need to know what he was reading. He was reading The Doors of Perception. Yes. By Aldous Huxley. All about auto, autobiography. Theoretical. Huh. Theoretical physics. Did and... he decide what book was reading or like who decided that? I haven't got a clue. But that they chose that book specifically because it is tied to the About idea expanding of expanding your mind. Yeah. With hallucinogen drugs. Mm -hmm. Hallucinogenic. Um, okay. I think I read somewhere actually that the, the, the stuff inside that book is what inspired the psychedelic visuals of Dr. Strange in the comics. Oh, initially. okay. So I think that it was a reference in that fashion, like, you know. Makes sense. I think. Okay. Okay. Um, a couple more through lines. I th well, at least one other. So we we see Thor in the after in the post credit scene. And Doctor Strange is like, oh, okay, I'll help you find him then. I assume that means we'll see him in Ragnarok. Who knows? Which is in three films, I think. Yeah, that sounds all right. Um, so then the, I assume that's when we'll see all of those those peeps. Um, is there anything else? I still, I feel like the, the bad dude, even though Doctor Strange made a deal, was like, hey, you can't mess with Earth anymore. I still feel like he has something to do with Thanos. Dormammu. He, yeah, he just kind of looks like him. I mean, do you if want me had... to answer? No, no, it's fine. Unless it's actually, yeah, go ahead and answer because it's probably a definitive no. But it, it is a definitive no. But but he's like purple. He has like the same facial structure. Obviously, he has like the ripples in his face. But if he didn't, yeah. But like Thanos is like a corporeal being, as opposed to some sort of like. Cosmic. I don't know what powers he has. Deity type thing that Dormammu was. Because Dormammu was this? just like a Do we see floating this dude head. again? Where is he done? What Dormammu? Uh huh. I mean, Dormammu didn't die, did he? No, he didn't die, but that doesn't mean we see him again. No, it doesn't. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um, is there Consider the door open. You know, he's introduced, he could come back. But technically, it, I don't know whether it's a thing. Did close the door technically for Earth. Mm, that's true. Fair enough. Okay. Um, Not that that's a hint at anything. I'm just, you know, clarifying. Yeah. Um, are there any through other through lines that I missed? No, but there there is a, an interesting one that was speculated on far more than it should have been at the time when this film came out you won't remember this i doubt at all um too busy crocheting um just before his car crash at the beginning of the film the the person over the phone is like going through different surgery options of like who his next patient's going to be mm -hmm. and one of them uh, I, I'm not going to say it word for word because I can't remember it, but it was along the lines of um, an Air Force colonel who had um, severed his spine due to an accident with experimental armor. Yeah, so that's and Rody, right? That's what everyone thought, but it's uh -huh. not. Really? Um, and it doesn't go anywhere, so it's, I'm not spoiling anything by saying it's not Rody. Um, but like, the, again, just as a, another little tidbit of information, everybody was speculating that because Civil War had just happened, we were like, oh, well, obviously that's Rhodey because that sounds exactly like and they've that, that's just describing that Rhodey. Um, well, I mean, not explicitly. Because he turns down the surgery, so it doesn't matter if it is or isn't, right? Precisely. So it's like, it, it's it's neither here nor there. But 
the, the way that it was presented and just how accurately it does describe Brody, people were like, well, that seems to be implying or setting up something. Mm -hmm. But it, it doesn't. But it seems oh, so like, specific. Oh, I that, see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Like they, you. they must have put it in there for a reason. Yeah, it probably was. But he said that it's like it's it because he said that it was like there's nothing he could do, right? Yeah. Um and also, not that it matters, and it this isn't meant to confuse you at all, but mm -hmm. technically, in terms of like the timeline of when these events are happening, this does predate Civil War. The events of this film oh interesting okay and i think i think there have been a couple of other minor examples but it's it's like it's not huge swathes of time um so don't let that confuse you in terms of thinking that things are chronologically out of order um yeah i mean I think it's just... obviously the avengers exist because they mention it in the film yeah yeah, yeah. that that so. sort of stuff obviously but yeah. in terms of like from one film to the next film that released like this is an example where they are arbitrarily saying that his Doctor Strange's origin story happened before Civil War. Um, okay. I don't know whether that's a retroactive thing to try and explain why he didn't show up in Civil War. Like, I don't know. Mm. But interesting nonetheless. Okay. Well, that is very interesting. Um, I do think that there's one other thing that I wanted to touch on just because I realized we hadn't. Um, the relationship between Christine and Stephen. Mm. Um, I, <laughs> I do. So I do like their relationship when he's like, just like walks into the hospital, like the second time and he's like, Christine, <laughs> she's like, what? Yeah. I did like that. But he treats her so nasty. Like he is awful to her. Like, especially at that, at the beginning. And you can only yeah, imagine yeah. that, like, obviously that's like a very strained situation and he's probably never treated her quite that terribly, but like, it seems to be that like, he's never really treated her nicely <laughs> like ever. Um, yeah. And he kind of acknowledges that at the end of the film, like, you know, like I really wanted to apologize. Like I've never been kind to you kind of thing, but man, he really is mean. Well, I mean, it, it's the ancient one's final and most pivotal lesson, isn't it? She says, mm -hmm. it isn't about you. And that's like revelatory to Stephen because... <laughs> He's like, it's like, not about me? Yeah, his entire life, it has just been uh, about becoming a doctor, as you said, and how difficult that is and all of his accomplishments and his prestige and stuff. And then his entire journey to Kamataj and learning magic and stuff was all in service don't forget of just healing his hands mm -hmm. so that he could go back to that prestige and being a surgeon mm -hmm. and you know the the ancient one is like this whole th it's not about you not just your life isn't about you the the world isn't about you the, there are so many other things that you can be doing better things that you can be doing that aren't just in service of yourself yeah and that then makes him a, a more compassionate person but it's that on top of that, the nature of the, the job that he essentially takes on um, means that he he can't have a normal life and he can't return to the, that normality that he was sort of craving for, even if it was changed and he wanted to be more open and kind and be with Christine and stuff like that. He can't do that, nevertheless. So... Yeah, it, it's an interesting relationship between the two of them. It, it's kind of reminiscent to me of the early days of, like, Tony and Pepper. Mm, yeah. You know, where Tony always cared about Pepper, and I'm sure Pepper cared about Tony as well. But because of his ego and just flagrant disregard and whatnot, he just didn't really have the perspective that he needed to contextualise the situation and how much x person meant to him that kind of thing yeah so hopefully we see more of it yeah hopefully we do because i did like christine's character um and yeah i, th I thought that she was really well written as well um although Always good to I... have competent women yes you know? yes it is she exists away from Stephen. She is a accomplished surgeon in and of herself. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it's, it's awesome to kind of like see that, like, like, cause you basically see that her life goes on, right? Like mm -hmm. she's like, bye Steven. And then like, just goes back to her life and like just continues to work as a doctor. And you, and you very briefly see that when he encounters her again for the first time, like she's yeah. kind of doing her own thing. So I do, I do enjoy that, that because sometimes it feels like a lot of these like romantic interests just exist the moment that the hero needs them, which I mean, is still technically mm -hmm. true in this case, but you can tell that like, like her, her life has been, like she's been living her life. So. Yeah. Cause like I Pepper is the, the, you know, she's the assistant to Tony. Yeah. And obviously technically she gets the role of running Stark Industries. Um, but that comes after multiple appearances. And we know that like Peggy from Captain America, she goes on to help found shield, mm -hmm. but we don't actually get that in the films. It's only, after the fact that we learn it but it's nice to see yeah. even just for a smidgen of time that what you say women exist outside of being who, who would have guessed, romantic who would have guessed? <laughs> uh that's crazy yeah that's crazy um all right do we have any other characters that we wanted to talk about like the bat like the other bad guy that's whatever his name kaisilius yeah his name um I, I a bit formulaic, a bit generic to me. Um, yeah, I think Mads Mikkelsen. I did like how they him, resolved it, but yeah, how he just sort of got melted into a formless being. Yeah, um, eternal life as part of the one. Um, a waste of an actor, really, because Mads Mikkelsen is so fantastic, um, and I think he does the best that he can do with what he's given. It's just that we don't there's like indications of this history to Caecilius as a character you know the, throughout the film they say quite a few times that everybody goes to Kamataj because they're broken in some way you know or they're missing something in yeah. their lives it sounds like he was emotionally broken right? exactly and I'm like that is that's interesting it's just that we don't see any of it and yeah he see? just comes across as a bad guy who wants to help a bigger bad guy yeah but again, back to my point, if this was a novel, you would get all of those details. Yeah, of course. What a waste. Um, but I mean... <laughs> Someone that, write that this is, book. <laughs> that is unfortunately a trend that persists throughout, not all of the MCU, but a, a, a decent enough chunk of it where it is an issue that recurs, where they will get either a um, an excellent actor and underutilize them, or have just a villain as a character and do nothing with them or outright kill them off, essentially, like yeah. they do in this film. Um, because like, I mean, they have why to do shut something the door? With, like for the plot, right? But yeah, but like, did he have to even like the, I like the way that they resolve it, but could they not have just had it so that Caecilius and his goons were sucked up into the void and they stayed as they were? So Maybe. then you have the potential that he could he could come get back get out or rescind on the promise that Dormammu made, you know. Um, so my suspicion, I mean the thing is is that Doctor Strange from this point moving forward has to be focused on like Avengers things, right? So like what the other heroes need help with, like at least for quite some time until we come back to another film of his. Right, um, so you can't have like this impending doom overhanging because then he'd be distracted from his his other hero stuff. I mean, or at least that's probably what the overall story like. Like writers. yes and no. Like yes, because the majority of the time that we'll see him for the considerable future is guest appearances, supporting roles, or like he is part of the ensemble. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they are resolving a collective issue. But, and it, I'm not going to spoil anything, obviously, but even within that, they still very clearly delineate that Doctor Strange's number one priority above anything else is protecting the mystical side of things. Right. Like the artifacts, the sanctums, right. the, the sorcerers that are underneath him, 
like that those are his priority and obviously not again saying anything but like he will make decisions in the future based on that as opposed to what the collective wants so like yes he is serving alongside other people for the foreseeable future but i, I it isn't just he completely forfeits what is established in this film as his key corner of, of the mcu if that makes sense yeah and i think that like like the bad guys getting sucked up and then like you don't see them like destroyed like i think that that could have worked but if they had like done something where it's like he like lives to fight another day kind of thing like i don't think that like doctor strange could have afforded to chill out so but i mean Yes, but I do think that even that thing like that I presented would resolve that issue because you think in I, Stranger's I, mind, he's he's like Dormammu made the promise. He knows that I can screw him over if he rescinds on it. And as far as Strange is, is aware, there is no way to get out of that dimension because that dimension has to essentially be summoned. That's what Caecilius was doing in the film. So you have to, mm. someone has to summon that dimension to the place to allow things to come through so he thinks it's very secular or at least away from earth which is his key priority yeah but i get your point but i, I still think that that would canon wise work and allow strange to prioritize other things maybe in the in the short term maybe hmm. um okay anything else that you want to talk about any other characters or themes that you wanted to talk about with this film um i mean we we talked about mordo but like again great actor underutilized i think mm. um i like that he's set up as a bit of an antagonistic force at the at the very end of the film um i kind of think it's interesting something. right because like he is very much he's the one that because uh, she was saying like the ancient one was saying like oh there's a possibility that things with strange go bad right mm. And he ends up like Kais like Caecilius. Mm -hmm. Um, and then at the end, like because he's the one that convinces her theoretically to take strange. Yeah. But then he's the one that ends up becoming bad. So he fulfills the prophecy that she was worried about. Yeah, because he's but like even in his head, which again makes him a somewhat interesting character, is that he is still doing something that he believes is altruistic, right? Mm -hmm. But he's just doing nefarious things to subscribe to that belief. Like he still is like maintaining the natural order and, you know, making sure that people don't step out of line and do things that they're not supposed to with this, this power. But like his perspective on it is warped at the end of the film. Yeah. Where he's like, rather than doing something, you know, uh less aggressive he's just like well the best way the most assured way i can self-guard these bad things from happening is by stripping power away from people which is yeah. obviously a bit of an overcorrection. but uh yeah and i mean i think that the, that's a common thing that you see happen when people live and just like everything's black and white yeah and there's no gray area and i think that like that's kind of how he's like mentally decided to deal with everything as like it's it's like what you know they keep calling Caecilius and his people zealots in the film right mm -hmm. mordo is technically a zealot for kamata she subscribes to that ideology and that belief mm -hmm. so completely that when it is revealed that the ancient one is tapping into the dark um dimension with dormammu that's that's like that's like a devout christian definitively finding out that jesus was best friends with satan you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah that that is that kind of revelation that would be foundation shaking for someone of of his devoutness um so i think that the, the heel turn that he has to a, a villain makes sense um but i just don't know that they utilize his character too expertly here because at least what we're presented Again, like talking about Caecilius and his backstory and his beliefs and what he is there for. We don't have that for Mordo either, really. We got a tiny bit more than Caecilius did, but 
even then it wasn't really enough to equate to a full understanding of his motivations as a character yeah. outside of being devoted to camotage and whatnot. Who knows? Will he come back? Maybe. Probably not. No, none, none of these characters ever come back. Last time we see Doctor Strange, actually. Surprising, I know. That's really sad. Yeah. I know um, that's not true, but that's okay. Um, okay, ranking list. There's one character, uh, we don't have to talk about it too much, because he's not really in the film all that much. Okay. Wong. He's the best. He's adorable. Yeah. He's so great. I love Benedict Wong as an actor. He, like, especially like his laughs at the end. Yeah, finally laughing. He's like, you're show. funny. <laughs> yeah. And, he's, and, and he Strange listens to Beyonce. Yep. You know, he's, he listens yeah. To Beyonce. Yeah. Like, was he was he listening to Beyonce because he likes Beyonce or because he'd never heard Beyonce? No, because um, Stephen referenced it. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. So he was like, he was. He, he was checking it out. So he was like, Oh, yeah. I've never heard of any of these people. So he probably <laughs> looked up Beyonce on his iPod and then yeah. found her. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, being what you can imagine would be a secondary supporting character for the Doctor Strange universe part of this. Um, Wong has only grown in um, fan popularity since. Um, so it, it's refreshing actually to go back, not refreshing in a bad way, but refreshing in a, in a nice way. Not that Wong is bad now, but to, to go back to how he started, you know, mm. and to have those moments, you know, of him chuckling at the end, just to see that part of his character start to shine through right at the end of this film. Um, yeah, d without saying anything, like you're going to go on a journey with Wong. That's good. I'm really glad yeah. to hear that because I, I was honestly convinced that he was going to die because he did, mm. right? Like, he, he, he was done. And so I assumed that the, the ending of the film would be like, he had to sacrifice himself and he'd be like, well, I already died once anyways, so it's obviously my time kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that they didn't do that. Yeah. Anybody else? I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. Like the, the ancient one is a thing, you know. Like, yeah. I mean, there's not Curtis really Winton's too much. Actress, we we but... kind of talked about her towards the beginning. Yeah. But... Good actress. Like... Yeah. Cool, cool presence, you know. But again, not really much is done with her, especially not past the first half of the film. Yeah. So. Now it's too late. Yeah. Well, maybe they'll do an ancient one something i don't know <laughs> spin-off tv show yeah. prequel one day yeah. maybe maybe you never know i'd be down honestly you know yeah I would too. um okay ranking list do you want to go first um yes but run i mean run me through the okay do you want top, me, top five is it top, top five? five okay top five that's what i was trying to figure out okay so civil war winter winter soldier ultron avengers guardians of the galaxy Below that or or in that? This might sound like blasphemy to you because I can already predict where you're putting it. I'm <laughs> going to put it below Ultron. So below Ultron, above Avengers. Yes. So that's what? Four? Four. four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where I'm going to okay. put it. Where do you think I'm putting it? Ooh, I wonder. Mm, I I don't know. Maybe like sixth or something. Okay, maybe I'll put it like tenth. <laughs> it's going at the top, like, right? Uh, yeah, is it? it is going. It is going at the top. Although I, I do recognize so. that some of the other movies may be better. Yeah, I mean, like again, the the more we get into this, and the more diverse the films get, it does become more about personal preference. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is I, I do think overall, um, from everything that we've watched previously, my favorite films seem to be like specifically like Guardians and, and Ant-Man seem to be like films that rely heavily on comedy. Hmm. Um, That's good because you can get this, a lot of that going forward. 
Doctor Strange does not rely heavily on comedy. There is comedy, but it's not like a huge um, thing in the film. And so I think it's interesting that it's above the other two that obviously I prefer because of comedy. But then it has magic. Exactly. I love magic. In case you couldn't tell from me geeking out for a minute. Um, Okay. I do officially want to add to my simplest. Doctor Strange will be going on the simplest. <laughs> That's another one I can put a tick next to on my list that I've predicted. Um, and I am ordering these. I'm going to put okay. him number two under Loki. So Loki is top, then Doctor Strange. Is there anybody else? Then Heimdall. Yes. Okay. That's that's cool. So I've got three. I'm three for three currently. How many guesses on, do you have? I'm just curious. I have one. Two, three, four, five, I have seven preliminarily. Okay. And you've got three of them. I one didn't... of them you've already seen, but I just I don't think we're there yet. I think at some point it will be officially. Is it Captain America? No. Okay. Because. I did like I, I, I think what, I already said I saw a later clip of Captain America and I yeah. was like, "Dang, Carl, you're looking good." But I, I can't. The, the only reason that he's not on the list is because I think it sounds stupid, but I'll only know once we've seen the film where, yeah, because I, I know what you're referencing. Once we've seen that, like I think once you have seen it, that might sway you either which way. Mm. We'll see. But I think I think all of these are like locks that they're gonna happen. Ah, okay. Okay. So just a matter of time. Okay. <laughs> just waiting to be proven correct on the rest of them. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. I like that you have a little note. That's cute. <laughs> uh okay. Well, we're officially almost an hour and forty minutes, so I think that we can let y'all go however i do want to um thank everybody for hanging out with us and give a special shout out to our patrons we have bucky blue amon fabulous brianna brianna's mom brianna's brother brianna's wife nikolai at night cypher primus brendan myers marcus o'neill lillian mimi J, the snack network david hotright dave harp the xbox expansion pass alpaca tom and lee navarro thank you guys for your support and sam where can people find you Anywhere and everywhere, across all dimensions. Really? H E A N E Y. Okay. Okay. You? Um, you can find me at Fabulous Brianna, um, F A B U L I S T B R E A N N A. Um, you can also find us in the Discord. Link is in the description. So come hang out with us. Um, I think that's everything. But I uh, appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Have a great two weeks. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.